right, I'm just going to quickly show uh, Sailmaker's whipping here. So this is to use to bind the end of the line. Um, I was going to work on some of my bow and stern lines, just getting them finalized. So I'm using 5 8 3 strand nylon line. Um, and it is right hand laid. So that means that the strands of the line, the way it was constructed, is that each strand that is made up of multiple yarns is twisted counterclockwise and then each strand is tw then twisted clockwise to form the line so the each strand grabs on to the partner next to it and holds on to it in that way um, so when we do the whipping we're gonna do it with the lay of the line that is to say that instead of opening the lay and loosening it by wrapping it one way we're gonna tighten it by wrapping it with this clockwise lay um, you can probably get away with it the other way uh, on a whipping it's probably not the most critical but on in other parts of Marlin's bike seamanship you won't get away with that um, so I would suggest doing it with the lay uh, you just need a small sail needle um, you can get these at any chandlery in small packs. Um, I've got some, just some Marlowe number no. two uh, whipping twine here. You want it to be waxed. You can get it pre-waxed, or you can wax it yourself with a beeswax candle. Um, it just helps the the lay of the twine stay together as you're working with it. It lubricates it while you're stitching. So I just thread the needle and I double back the twine. That's just going to allow the, me to make the whipping twice as fast because this is quite thin whipping twine. So I've got about five feet of whipping twine here in total. Um, I usually do one as a bit of an experiment to see how much twine it takes me to do a whipping on any given size of line. And then after that, I'll have a more accurate picture of how much twine I need to do the next one. So. I'm using a sailmaker's palm for this. This is a old-fashioned sailmaker's tool. It's just a thimble that allows you to push the needle through really thick canvas or difficult subjects like this this somewhat weathered nylon line. Uh, if you don't have this, you can use a piece of chunk of hardwood, an offcut, or a piece of soft copper or something like that, and you can stick the needle in and then push down against the needle onto the hard surface. It's just to preserve your hands from getting poked by the back end of the needle. So when we start this whipping, simply you've got gaps in between the strands, okay? So there's three strands and there are gaps between each of them. So we're gonna come, in this perspective, we're gonna come from right to left and pass the needle under one of the strands and try and get it as close to the middle as possible so you're, you're pricking as few of the fibers as possible. So you're passing it through. Now I don't have a knot in the end of this twine, it's unnecessary because the whipping turns are going to capture um, the tails at the end of the whipping, so to speak. So they're, you know, knots usually cause extra friction and can work themselves loose or just be um, be cut by the friction over time of them chafing. So I leave these two tails sticking out the end. So I'm just going to trim my constrictor knot binding on the end here so it's not in my way. So one, one detail about doing a whipping is you want to bind whatever line before you cut it um, to do the whipping or you're going to do two whippings on either side of where you're going to cut. Whipping a line that is fraying at the end is going to be really difficult and it's going to, not going to turn out uh, very well so you're going to be fighting to try and keep those strands together while you're whipping it. So here we've got the tails of the, the whipping twine coming out um, I'll even them out a little bit and just lay them down on top of that strand. So this is what we're going to wrap all the turns over top of, okay? So I'm wrapping with the lay, so you can see that the strands are twisting clockwise this way, so I'm going to wrap that way as well. So when you're doing these turns, just take care that the, 
the two parts of the twine aren't twisted. Uh, there's no gaps between the turns. So you wrap right over that tail and once you have about a, a turn and a half, generally there's enough friction on the tail that you can pull it quite tight. Make sure that the turns are good and perpendicular with the line that you're whipping. So I'm just pulling it tight there. The tail's pulled through a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to build up more friction here as we go. So you want to make sure your turns are nice and tight, butting up against each other. This is the this is the slow part here, so I'll probably speed this up in the final video, but I'm just making turns until the whipping is approximately as tall as the diameter of the rope. That is the general rule of thumb. Um, so you don't need to make these big long hot dog whippings uh, four or five inches long. It's not necessary, it's just a waste of twine. So if you make a good whipping, clap on a good whipping with this rule of thumb. It should last for a long time. A lot longer than sticking electrician's tape or duct tape on there. And you never know who's going to notice. On that charter boat that I work for, we had a older Danish fellow come on board who was visiting Canada the other day and he was pointing out to his son all of the Marlin Spike seamanship on board and he pointed to our you know some of our whippings and said that's the proper way to do that so there's still a few around who know these these traditional marlin spike seamanship techniques and appreciate them but it is time consuming and that's why a lot of people just resort to tape or burning it with a butane lighter you can you can melt the ends with a butane lighter of synthetic line um, on top of your whipping and that's going to make it even even more resistant. I mean it'll never ever come apart. Um, the strands essentially are welded together by the, the heat. I mean it's just this modern synthetic rope is just different variations on plastic. Uh, not really great stuff to breathe when you're melting it though. So we're getting towards the, the finishing of the whipping here, and I'm just untwisting the line as I go, trying not to have any twists. Generally, with any Marlin Spike seamanship, um, the smoother you can make your work, the better. There's less risk of chafing, um, and therefore things usually tend to last longer, especially when we're talking about eye splices and seizings and things like that that are integral to the structure of the rigging but if you start using those principles with the simplest things like a whipping um, becomes muscle memory to just take your time and be careful with things so we've almost reached the end here So now, I've got my two tails here, coming out nearly at a gap in the strands right there. So I'm going to plunge the needle in over top of my two tails to make the final turn here, down like this in between that, these two strands on top. And it's going to come out on this side just above all of my other turns. So I just untwist it sure it's good and straight. Now watch your finger when you do this because I am holding the tension with my other finger here. Holding the tension is key. You also want to avoid separating your other turns with the needle so it might take a couple tries to aim the needle through. Hopefully this is in focus here. So then you push the needle through with the palm. Sometimes you have to give the needle a little wiggle. The more you do this, the more grip strength you get, and the easier it is to yank the needle out the other end. 
Okay, so now that was the final regular turn for the whipping. And if you end up with a gap here between the top turn and the, the last one in line, um, which can happen depending on the diameter of the lines you're using, you can use these tails to lever down on the top turn as you're tensioning the last turn and that'll help you get a nice nice even whipping. The devil's in the details. So now you can see that there's a gap between these two strands here even through the whipping so we're just going to follow that with frapping turns. So I'm going to walk my frapping turn down this gap and pass the needle in here. Okay we're going to be working directionally against the lay now so so I'm going to pass the needle under this strand so going from top to bottom of the whipping for the first one okay so your twine's going to end up twisted pretty frequently here but what you can do is just take your needle and separate twisted parts and work them down into the bottom in between the strands and then tighten up. Now you can cinch this quite tight and then I'm going to roll it against the lay here and I've got my twine coming out the bottom of the whipping and now I'm going to bring it up following the lay in between the lay of the two strands there and I'm going to put the needle through the top I'm going out this direction. So we're going to do that until there's a frapping turn um, in between each lay of the line. So sticking it out there. So frapping turns just help to bind the round turns tighter. It just preserves it for longer and gives adds quite a bit of tension whatever you're working on. Okay, there's number two. Pull it tight and then keep turning the line over and now we're at the top of the whipping and we'll go to the bottom with this wrapping turn, the final one. So instead of going the same direction and bringing the needle out under the first wrapping turn we've done, we're going to reverse the direction here and take the needle and push it out this way towards the last one, the previous one that we did. This isn't the only way to finish a whipping. This is just the way I learned. Um, and you develop a bit of a style after having been shown a few different ways and uh, this one works for me. So by no means is this the be all end all. Different ships, different long splices. So I'm going to take the needle Pass it under this strand here. Now I've picked up a couple of yarns off of that strand, so I'm backing it out. Try and get it right in the middle if you can. Okay, so there's the last cinching the last frapping turn into place. No twists in it, that's good. All right. Now your twine is coming out under one of the frapping turns and this is a bit of a tricky part. Um, you want to stick the needle carefully under these two frapping turns. I stick it from right to left out this way and you want to try and not cut or catch any of the the round turns with your needle. Okay so you, you can take the flat of the needle. It's got they're three-sided needles so they're triangular almost. Um, so you just take a flat side of the needle and press it, press it down into the round turns a little bit and stick the end out from under those frapping turns and if you've picked up anything you back it out a little bit and work it until you haven't got any snags, okay? And then you're going to pull it through and I like to tension it upwards first, nice and snug and then pull it down into the, the crotch in between the strands there. Now we're going to go under this strand and out this way and make one more of those turns. Okay. 
Okay, that's going to bury the little half knot you made under the last wrapping turn. So same thing here. You want to work the needle carefully, not pick up any fibers from the round turns. Bring it underneath, pull it tight, work it down, and now to finish off, I'll just pass the needle under this strand and we'll cut, cut it close off. Okay, there we are. So, coming out the other side, cinch it down. So, as much as possible, uh, when you're cutting off twine very close to the rope that you don't want to cut, um, you want to try and keep your knife stationary. You can do this with scissors, it's even safer. Um, you want to try and keep your knife fairly stationary and just pinch the, the twine and rub the twine back and forth on the knife. Now it can be hard to do depending on what size of stuff you're working with, but you, you risk a lot less than when you're sawing towards your, your good line with your knife. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll, that's the finished whipping there, so not bad.